Hey, it's Steve with Dabble Lab, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about using uh, Twilio functions to handle autopilot tasks. Um, so I've got a, a, a bot set up here, demo bot, that is just a, a, a default bot set up with the blank template. And so there's some tasks in here. And by default, the, uh, the tasks are going to be handled. Um, well, let me show you actually first. We'll go to the simulator here and, and just kind of show you what the default does. So when you say hi, uh, I just get a response back from the bot that says, hi, how can I help you today? And that response, if I go to uh, the, the greeting is being handled by this task here, the greeting task. And uh, the reason it's being handled by the greeting task is because the word that I entered in, hi, is being recognized um, as one of the samples here. Or if you said something, you don't have to have an exact match, but something that the machine learning model that is um, being used to, to decide what the user wants is, uh, in this case, being mapped to, to that. So um, how Autopilot's responding is using uh, an action that is really just defined. This is um, functionality that Autopilot provides uh, where you can use um, just a, a JSON uh, file to tell Autopilot what to do. And by default, these um, this is all defined in uh, it's with a static JSON file uh, in the action bin. So when you make changes here, Really, you're you're just making changes to the uh, JSON file that's stored in the uh, the action bin. So all this can be is JSON, meaning that you can't have any programmatic logic in here. So if you want to, um, you know, check what the user says or you know do something that would require uh, programmatic logic, you you can't do that with just uh, JSON because JSON doesn't provide um, uh, that. But what you can do is you can use an action URL. So what an action URL is going to do is basically take what Autopilot gets and post that out to a URL. In this case, it's posting it straight to the action bin and getting that JSON file back. But we could also post to a code handler and let's let's call it a, um, a task handler. And so um, let's take a look at doing that using uh, a Twilio function. So if we create a new function, let's create a blank function and we'll, um, we'll call this uh, autopilot uh, demo bot. So this is just one function that I'm going to use to handle all of the requests that uh, come into demo bot. And so here, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just wire this up with uh, with a, a, a few things that um, are going to be used to respond back to Autopilot in a format that Autopilot understands. So uh, Autopilot is expecting a, a JSON um, object to come back in a certain format. Uh, what am I doing? Talking and typing is not working. Um, Okay, and within that object, uh, Autopilot is also expecting a, uh, a, an array of actions. So we'll say um, response uh, actions um, equals, and we'll just make it a blank array right now. And then we're going to need to respond with actions that Autopilot understands. And so we'll, um, we'll push uh, one action in just as a placeholder for right now. So we'll go uh, response.actions.push. Uh, and then we'll push in a, um, a say action. And we'll just say hello from a function. Okay. And then we'll send this, we'll respond back to autopilot with that object. So this is super simple. Um, what's going to happen is the, uh, the function is going to get the request at this URL here, or autopilot's going to post uh, to this URL. 
that is going to come in. Uh, the autopilot request is going to come in uh, as uh, an event here. And we're not doing anything with that event yet. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. But um, what we're going to do is we're just uh, creating a response back and we're adding an action to the response to just say hello from a function. So if I go um, back over here to autopilot and just paste in the URL for that function that we just created and save it, this is going to wire things up differently. So now when I say hi, I get hello from a function. So rather than the static JSON responding from the, um, from the bin, we're now responding back from a function. And this is really important because now I'm sort of um, able to do whatever I want within code to start working with autopilot. So let me, let me show you no, another um, example and hopefully that'll illustrate it. So if right now I, I say, I, I ask something like, what are your hours? Um, I don't have anything defined to handle this request right now. Um, I don't need to do that, I just need to go like this. Uh, so what's happening is the fallback handler or the fallback task is handling this. So sorry, I didn't get that. Could you say that again or try saying something else? So if I go um, to back over here and do the same thing for my fallback task, I can have that routed to this endpoint as well. So if I go um, to my tasks over here and go to my fallback task, which right now is using um, an action in the uh, uh, action bin, just static JSON, but I'm gonna change that just like I did for the greeting to the URL for my um, task handler, which is the Twilio function and save that and now if I go back over here and do the same thing, what are your hours? Uh, why do I keep doing that? I'm going to get hello from a function. So now I know the, the function is responding back. So now, now like within my code, I can start deciding what to do based on the response. So I'm going to do a really simple uh, example of that. So let's go uh, switch event and we're going to go like this um, case uh, if it's a greeting we'll respond with this If, the, if it's the fallback, we'll respond a little differently. Um, and, and this is um, this is going to illustrate the difference. So, so now um, I'm looking at properties that Autopilot is passing as part of the event, and I'm using those properties to decide how to respond. So let's, uh, let's take a look. I'll do um, hi, and I get the hello from a function, uh, but then I'll do what are your hours, and I'll get sorry, I don't know what to do. So now I kind of know what the user is asking for. So I could go in here and uh, of course make these something, um, make this a little bit more meaningful. Like I could create a task for uh, handling what are your hours. And then when the request comes in, look to see if the current task, which is being passed by autopilot is uh, matches the current hours and then I could respond uh, appropriately. And this is, this is a super simple example, but mostly what I'm uh, trying to, uh, to, to get across here is that you can handle 
the task request, the fulfillment of the task request using code, or you can handle it just using static JSON. Uh, when you use static JSON from the action bin, which is the default, you can't do anything programmatically in your code. So you can uh, use actions that like uh, the say action to say something back or the listen action to listen for another response, but you can't programmatically do uh, anything that you can't, you know, you just, there's just not um, uh, programming uh, capabilities that are part of JSON. So you're limited to what you can do with JSON but um, you can use an action URL to pass that request to a, a Twilio function or really any endpoint and then respond back with the, um, uh, in the format that Autopilot is expecting, which you can uh, see from these links here. This is, this is uh, the, this documentation shows you what's being passed over to your, um, your function endpoint so uh, I used this current task to get the uh, the, the current task name uh, that's what I used in that switch statement and then I could use like current input to get what the user is uh, has said um, and then real commonly uh, I might respond back with the um, remember action to remember the state where the bot is so that I could look at that when it comes in the next time. And, uh, and, and again, all of this is made possible because now I'm passing the request to code rather than uh, just responding with a static JSON document. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any um, questions or comments, you can leave those and I will respond just as quickly as I can. If this was helpful, please like the video and uh, subscribe to the Dabble Lab channel. There's uh, uh, many more of these. You can go to youtube.com slash Dabble Lab to check those out. Thanks so much.